What's up, Backgammon fans? This is Mark Olsen from BackgammonGalaxy.com. This is the basics video series. So if you had, haven't watched the videos before this one, I suggest that you go back and see some of the, the, the other basics video that we've done. But this video in particular is going to be about the dice combinations of Backgammon and the probabilities of the dice. So in Backgammon, it is a dice game. It's a strategy game, but it's also a probability game because we're playing with two dice each. So how do we calculate the probabilities over the board? Well, we have two dice. It has a uniform distribution, a die. It has six sides and the same probability of each of the sides. So one, each of the numbers have the probability of one in six, one sixth, so one to five. The same as the other, the same is true with the other die. It's of course the same die, which means that the probability of rolling a double one is one sixth times one six. So one out of 36 times, you're gonna roll double aces. What about the number two one? Well, is that also one in 36? No, it's not because in backgammon, whether you roll an ace with the first die and a deuce with the second die or vice versa, a two with the first die and an ace with the second die, it's the same roll, which means that you have two out of 36 dice combinations to roll a non-double. So one out of 36 to roll a double, and it doesn't matter which double it is, whether it's double six, double five, double four, double three, double two, double one, is the same. And the non-doubles have a probability of two out of 36 or one in 18. Okay, so how do we use this to our advantage? Let's have a look at this position. So you are playing the white checkers over here and I'm playing green. If you fail to bear off both your checkers in this roll, I'm gonna win because I'm gonna take off two checkers with, regardless of what I roll with the dice. In this position, we can actually calculate the exact winning chances for, for you here uh, by using the dice combinatorics. So let's count them out. Here, I'm gonna teach you my system of counting dice numbers. So what I do is I use my fingers to count. I start out by counting all the non-doubles and then I save the doubles for the end. I start from the top, so the highest non-double roll is a six and a five. And then I simply just count them downwards. So first I count six, five, then I go to six, four, then I go to six, three, then I go to six, two, then I go to six, one, and that was all the sixes. Now I go to fives. So then I'm gonna start with five and four because I already counted five, six in the previous count when I counted the sixes. So then I'm gonna go to five, four, five, three, five, two, five, one, four, three, four, two, four, four, one, three, two, three, one, and two, one. And then I'm gonna count the doubles at the end. And then I'm gonna use my fingers. So each full finger represents two out of 36. So that would be a non-double. Half a finger represents one out of 36. So that would be the doubles. So let's try to count this out and use my finger system here. So I start from the top. So I'm gonna count six, five. That's one finger. I'm not even gonna use the dice here. Six, four, six, three, six, two, six, one. No, six, one doesn't work because you cannot take both checkers off with six, one. So six, five, four, three, and two worked. Okay, let's go to the fives. Five, four. 5-3 also works, 5-2 also works, 5-1, nope, doesn't work because now you rolled an ace and you can't take off both checkers. What about the fours? Well, we already counted 6-4 and 5-4, so we have to go to 4-3. Four, 4-3 three. Four, three doesn't work, it doesn't bear off both checkers. So none of the fours, none of the threes, none of the twos that we didn't already count works. Okay, so we have seven fingers of the non-doubles, that's 14 out of 36, because remember, each finger represents two out of 36. Now I'm gonna count the doubles. So double six, half a finger, double five, that's a full finger now because that's two halves. Double four also work, double three also work, double two also work, and double one, nope, double one doesn't work. So we have nine and a half fingers, which is 19 out of 36 dice combinations for white to win this game. So white is a favorite. So if white has access to the cube, he should most definitely double in this position because it's the last roll. The cube cannot be recubed. So if you have the slightest of edge, you should cube. And uh, because you're a 19 out of 36 favorite in this position. Let's have a look at another position here where we use dice statistics to our knowledge. You unfortunately just rolled a 6-1. So you have to leave a shot, right? The six is forced, we take out the six and 
the ace, you cannot play it safe, so you have to expose yourself and leave a shot. What is the probability of green hitting the white checker? Well, again, let's count. So now we're going to count all of the dice combinations that includes an ace. So we have 6-1-5-1-4-1-3-1-2-1 and that's all the non-doubles. So that's five fingers, so that's 10 rolls out of 36. And now we're going to count the doubles. Double one, that's the only one. So that's half a finger. So that's 11 out of 36 to hit a direct shot. So that's a good thing to remember. Every time you have a direct shot, if you don't have any additional numbers that hit, it's always 11 out of 36. Okay, what happens if we take this checker one pip back, put it there instead. Now it's a deuce that hits instead of an ace. So again, all dice combinations that includes a deuce with two dice have a probability of 11 out of 36. However, here there is an additional. Here, green can also roll double one. So you have to add the additionals to the direct shot. So we have 11 out of 36 that hits with a deuce directly and you have double aces that also hits the checker. So that's a total of 12 out of 36. What if we put it one more, one pip more back? Well, again, we have all the threes, which are 11 out of 36. And now we have to count the additionals. So here we have two one and double one. So that's one finger and a half. That's three extra numbers. So that's a total of 14 out of 36. Again, we will move it one pip back. The direct fours, that's 11. Let's count the additionals. 3-1, one, double one, and double two. So that's two full fingers, four extra shots, 15 out of 36 numbers that hit the checker when it's four pips away. What about five pips away? Again, 11 out of 36 with the fives, counting the additionals, 4-1, 3-2, and that's it. No doubles hit this checker. So again, we have 15 out of 36. It was actually the exactly same probability as four checkers or four pips away. And now we're gonna slide it over to six pips away. Again, 11 out of 36 to hit with a direct six. And let's count the additionals. Five one, four two, double three, and double two. So that's three full fingers, six extra numbers, thir uh, 17 out of 36 to hit the direct six. What about if we take it one more pip? So now it's seven pips away. Now it's out of the direct range. Well, now there's no direct shot. So now we can't apply that rule anymore. Now we have to count it again. So which numbers hit seven pips away? Well, six, one, five, two, four, three, six out of 36. So again, you can see the finger, finger system is quite useful. The probability of green hitting the white checker is six out of 36. Okay, guys, that was basically the fundamentals of dice probabilities in backgammon. I hope you can apply it to your advantage over the board. I hope to see you on Backgammon Galaxy or maybe at a live tournament where you are playing on this brand new Earthboard 2021 Galaxy Edition. Uh, yeah, it's a really beautiful board. Uh, the UBC final with Mochi versus Hideaki Uida was played at this board. So it already has kind of a legendary status in the Backgammon world. And it's, uh, it's available in the Galaxy shop for $8.99, including shipping. So that's all for this video, guys. See you next video. Backgammongalaxy.com